Hey y'all, and welcome to a special episode of Flick Connection where I'm gonna tell you about 10 of the absolute most disturbing movies I've ever seen. Now, as someone who makes a living watching movies, I watch a ton of movies, and I end up watching some of the most disturbing ones ever made. And I'm only gonna say it once, this list of 10 movies is insanely disturbing, so only proceed with these if you've got a strong stomach. I just don't wanna have to say that with every single recommendation, really, because my bottom recommendation on this list is, I think, the most disturbing, and easily one of the most disturbing films ever made. It's titled A Serbian Film. Now, right off the bat, again, this is not a recommendation, but I thought I would tell you a little bit about it since I've stomached all of these movies myself. A Serbian film is famous for being a naughty movie. In fact, there's an element with some of these movies that I kind of relate to people who eat spicy peppers or extreme hot sauces. It's really just kind of a measure to see how intense of a movie can you actually stomach. And a Serbian film pushes a ton of boundaries, most of them sexual, all of them incredibly disturbing. I really think they were just trying to disturb the audience with this one. If you want to push the limits of how disturbing a movie you could watch, a Serbian film does that. I'm not sure it does much else. Now, we'll jump from quite possibly just the most upsetting and depraved movie on this list to one of the milder ones that has still got a real one-two punch of an ending in Kill List. Now, this one's actually a pretty slow burn. There's a couple of scenes throughout that are disturbing, and I actually do recommend Kill List if you've got a strong stomach. A couple of those disturbing scenes actually utilize practical effects in a pretty miraculous way for a low-budget movie like this. So unlike a Serbian film, Kill List actually has a solid story, a lot of intrigue, and again, when it is disturbing, it has set up some very interesting moments, so there's quite a bit of substance there as well. Now with Kill List, you may walk away being blown away, but there's not a lot of heavy messages with this one either. There are some on this list that do have some pretty heavy messages, my next pick being one of those. It is titled Hard Candy. Now this one actually stars Ellen Page. Some of you can just unclutch your pearls now. Uh, that was their name when the movie was made. That's even how IMDb categorizes them along with the other co-stars in the movie that have also changed their names. And when you watch the movie, you'll have a hard time calling them Elliot because in this movie, Ellen Page plays a teenage girl who falls victim to a child predator, actually played by Patrick Wilson. And I like Patrick Wilson, he's in a ton of great stuff, but typically big budget movies and he's kind of affable and fun. This is one of his most intense roles, but he is outstaged by Paige in this movie. Well, it's kind of a magic trick of a role. And as disturbing as the setup is, if Hard Candy goes to some even wilder places, and it's really well done. This is actually directed by David Slade. He would go on to do some other really great stuff like 30 Days of Night. He even directed the Black Mirror Bandersnatch episode. But I still think Hard Candy, one of his first movies, is still far and away one of his best. Next up, we've got another movie that is just in the pantheon of disturbing movies. And there's actually two almost matching versions of Funny Games. Now the original is from 1997. It's an Austrian movie. They do have some English in it, but they mostly speak German in this movie. And it is not rated. It's that disturbing, especially for 1997. The basic setup here is you've got a couple of young teenage boys dressed in white, uh, torturing a seemingly ordinary family. And they're doing it just for kicks, which makes this movie extra disturbing. It kind of explores a certain type of evil. Uh, ooh, man, is it chilling. The remake is in English. It actually stars Naomi Watts and Tim Roth. Naomi Watts is actually featured in another high-ranking movie on this list. But you also get Michael Pitt as one of the baddies in the remake, and the remake is excellent. The picture quality is a little bit better, and you get to see some actors you're maybe a little more familiar with doing it. I know some people are against this whole concept and really are purist, want to stick to the original, and that's fine. But if you don't want to watch the subtitles or you just rather see Naomi Watts and Tim Roth do the movie, I can tell you the remake is just as good, and these are quality films but they're too disturbing, I think, for most viewers. 
if you can stomach it. These are actually pretty clever, albeit disturbing, sort of psychological horror movies. Next up, I've got one that eluded me for a while, and it too has another remake. However, in this situation, I do not recommend the remake. I'm only recommending the original version of Martyrs. And that's because in this case, the original is the original, and the remake's not even close to being the same thing, unlike the case with Funny Games. Now, this one falls into that same sort of hot sauce category as a Serbian film. It's insanely disturbing. The stuff they show on film is just so upsetting. In fact, I would say Martyrs is every bit as disturbing as a Serbian film. If not, it's damn close, but it is more interesting. There's kind of a supernatural element, not a big one. In fact, it's kind of subtle and interesting that makes Martyrs worth watching, but it's still a movie you've gotta have a strong stomach for. And I'll say the interesting elements in Martyrs, even though they're way more interesting than anything in a Serbian film, it's still not really enough for me to strongly recommend this movie, unless you clicked on this video wanting to find something disturbing. Martyrs is definitely that, and it's got a little more meat on the bone than movies in this, again, hot sauce category tend to have. Before talking about the rest of the movies, if you were eyeing this shirt, you can pick one up at darrenvandam.com shop. I'll put a link in the description, but it's really easy to find. There's a bunch of designs over there. They're all on 100% cotton shirts that are the softest cotton shirts I've ever owned, and they will shrink a little bit, so maybe buy a size up because these are fitted. But if you like fitted shirts, go with the size you normally get. They look great. But speaking of great stuff, let's move on with the list with one from Ari Aster. Now, he has directed some insanely disturbing movies, including Hereditary, and more recently, Bo is Afraid, which I have seen. It is intense, and I only recommend it for people who like really weird stuff that you have to think about a lot. But for this list, I chose Midsommar. Now, this one also has a pretty slow pace. It takes a while for the intensity to ramp up, even though it opens with an incredibly disturbing scene. This is just an excellent movie. Everyone's doing great work. There's subtleties in all their performances. You know kind of what the main characters are feeling, even though they're not saying it to one another. They're actually hiding quite a bit from each other, and it's all very obvious. It's a really beautifully done movie, and then it just descends into hell, basically. It's a long ride, it takes a while to get there, and it all takes place in this bright, sunny, picturesque, almost like paradise-like setting making it somehow even more disturbing. I didn't rank this one here because it's more disturbing than the other movies. It's in my top five because I actually recommend it for most people who have a strong enough stomach to handle it. I also recognize it's one of the more popular movies on this list. Next up, I've got one from a female director, actually the same director of a little known movie titled Raw. That one is insanely disturbing, but their follow-up to Raw is what I wanna talk about here, Teton. Okay, for this one, I do have to give you a few spoilers. It's well worth knowing what you're getting into with this one. I can, there's no way I can give you all the details. It's actually really complex. Um, there is a main character, a woman in this movie, who actually has sex with a car. Um, it's kind of beautiful the way that this movie shot on one hand. It's got this real stunning, sharp, striking cinematography. Um, but then you get wild stuff in it, like a woman having sex with not just a car, but like Satan's lowrider for the sake of this review. After that, she goes on a series of really disturbing crimes and then attempts to escape by pretending to be someone's long lost son. So there's a lot of really bizarre elements in Teton that actually work and serve a fairly interesting story. Now, while the main character is this woman, there's also a supporting role from this older father figure, and he is really, I think, who the movie ultimately ends up being about. There's some real wild moments in this one, moments I just cannot get out of my head. Uh, if you clicked on this video wanting to watch some wild stuff, Teton's got it in spades. All right, now I mentioned there's been some weird, disturbing sexual stuff in a lot of these movies. It's the one thing that I tend to give kind of a trigger warning for. I didn't with this because most of them feature those elements. My next one though is a movie about rape that is probably the most important and really visceral movie about rape. It's titled Irreversible. 
Now this is from infamous director Gaspar No, who has done a whole long list of disturbing movies, almost any of which could have found a spot on this list, but Irreversible definitely takes the cake, and it's probably his most well-reviewed movie. The reason this movie is so good and so effective is it shows a raw, unflinching look at sexual assault. The victim in this movie is played by Monica Bellucci. She did a wonderful job of handling an insanely disturbing scene, and the movie really puts you in a place you do not want to be. Not only do you witness the horrific assault in one long take with no cuts, you see what happens afterwards. Not just the aftermath of what happens to her, but how much it destroys the people that are close to her. And just like the title says, watching this movie, it's irreversible. It is not something you're going to be able to forget. The filmmaking is that effective in the movie. It's also worth noting that the movie is told in reverse order. And even though that may seem like a gimmick ripped from Christopher Nolan, it is insanely effective and irreversible. It is the way to experience a story like this. Um, this is just really kind of an incredible film that is probably too disturbing for most people. Now, yes, we're all the way down to my number two spot, and I've got a David Lynch classic on here. Honestly, I could have picked almost anything David Lynch has directed, and it would have found a home somewhere on this list, but for one that just stuck to my brain like glue, I went with Mulholland Drive. Now this one has some shockingly disturbing moments, but it's never stuff that is so disturbing that it's going to turn your stomach. It's all psychologically disturbing, and the buildup and the delivery to each moment that this movie decides to just punch you in the brain is so effective. And yes, it's puzzling and it's confusing, and there's entire scenes with characters that are not even really in the rest of the movie, Yet all of that stuff works, and it's all things that you could think about in great detail, especially if you're paying very close attention. And part of what I love about Mulholland Drive, it's this puzzle that you have to solve, yet you can solve individual pieces and be blown away without ever figuring the whole thing out, which is pretty cool. This one really stuck with me, mainly because of how different and wild it was, but it makes this list in particular because there's three moments at least I can think of that were wildly twisted and just again delivered to you like a punch in the skull. I think the movie is actually really brilliant even though it's just incredibly weird and has a tone that almost seems like a cheesy movie. It all manages to work for me in this really bizarre way. It's my favorite David Lynch movie, which is why it makes this spot on the list. And then we'll jump to my number one pick on this list, which is a movie I've maybe seen twice and honestly don't think I care to ever watch again. Yet it still made my number one spot, Requiem for a Dream. Now this is the movie on the list I think most people have seen. So much so I debated on putting it at number one, but honestly there are few movies that disturbed me this much and this effectively. Requiem for a Dream takes quite a while building up, but it looks at drug addiction from multiple angles and it does so in an exhausting way. Literally when the credits roll, your heart rate is up you almost feel like you're out of breath with this movie. It grabs a hold of you and does not let go. And that's not necessarily an experience I enjoyed, but this is one of those movies I will never forget. All of the performances are amazing. Even Marlon Wayans is good in this movie, but obviously you've got Jennifer Connelly and Ellen Bernstein doing really probably the greatest role of her long career. Jared Leto's all right in the movie, but this is long before he really hit his stride as an actor. But it's one of the most effective films I've ever seen. It's not an experience I wish to revisit, I think again in my lifetime, but that's a pretty damn effective movie for me to need to see once, maybe twice, and remember it in great detail forever. That's what this list was about. Don't worry, I'll be back with some much more accessible movies very soon, but I'll keep making these episodes as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special disturbing episode, and you will see me on the next one.